Hi there Ram owners. Today on your 2015 Ram 2500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's front hitch. The way I feel about this hitch is it's one of the best ways to maximize the versatility of your truck. If you're using it just recreationally, it's going to allow you to take accessories that you would normally have in the back, put them in the front to free up space in the back. Maybe you're going to be pulling a trailer along with you and you, you can't fit it back there. I also like it for work applications. If you're going to be using this industrially, you can get that extender on the front and you can haul some extremely long pieces of wood, some PVC pipe, ladders, whatever else you need to get done. The receiver does pass through the front here at the bottom, but it's tucked back so far that really when, it's, when you're standing up looking at it, you almost don't even notice it. Not until you get up down here in the front can you even tell that it's really there. And this is going to offer a two inch by two inch receiver here at the front for all the various different accessories you might want to use here. Whether it be maybe carrying a small dirt bike here at the front, if you wanted to put a small uh, motorcycle carrier on it, maybe even a really small motorcycle. You can also use it for extenders, such as a ladder rack extender if you want to go over the cab, or maybe you're carrying kayaks, something like that you could do. And it's also great for snow plows, winches, anything you want to add in real quickly, you can take those in and out real easily. And if you have trailers and you got a real tight spot, you want to put them in back at your house and using the back of your truck, you have a time struggling getting that in there. If you put your ball in the front here, you can have a much easier time maneuvering that trailer around by placing these steer wheels right up in front of your trailer. Our hitch is going to use a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty here at eTrailer.com. You can also get locking ones to protect your investment for whatever accessories you've got here in the front. And we also have anti-rattle devices available if you want to take out the play on any of your accessories so you don't have to listen to them going down the road. This hitch offers a 500 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. So you just want to keep that in mind when you've got your accessories here in the front. Maybe if you're using it for like a bike rack or a small dirt bike or motorcycle, you want to make sure you don't exceed that 500 pound weight. And that's going to include your accessory that's in the hitch plus anything that's on it. It also features a 5,000 pound gross trailer weight rating. And that's if you were to want to put a ball mount here in the front and move some stuff around, you can do a trailer up to 5,000 pounds in weight. There are no safety chain loops on this, so you can't obviously pull in reverse or anything like that. It's just for maneuvering a trailer around so you can easily get into the spot in your driveway. And it also features a 9,000 pound line pull. So if you have a winch up in here and you wanted to pull something out, that's gonna be your maximum pull with this hitch. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our front bumper, it measures about 10 inches. And this is important when determining if your accessories can be fully inserted into the hitch and if they have an upright storage position, if they can be placed in that without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top and sides of the receiver tube, it measures about 14 and a half inches. This is important when determining that you have the proper clearance and if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. And now when we talk about the installation, this is actually quite easy to get installed. Some of the bolts and hardware can be difficult to see, so you might first look up under there and go, what am I supposed to do? But if you follow along with us, we're gonna point out those hardware. It's really not a lot of steps, so it'll be over before you know it. We'll begin our installation here at the front of the vehicle by cutting out a notch for our hitch. I've already marked it here. You'll find a diagram in your instructions that'll tell you how to mark it out. Once you've got it marked, we're going to go ahead and just use a cutoff wheel here to cut it out. And then we can take a file now and clean up any of the rough edges and get this off. If you use a cutoff wheel, you're likely going to have a lot of little melted ends and a file will clean that up very nicely. And you can see it's just going to knock those off and give us a nice finish. We're now underneath the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and start on our passenger side, but we'll be doing the same steps over on the driver's side. And where your sway bar is right here, we're going to be working up underneath the fascia here in the front. So it's hard to see down here because you really have to reach up in there to get to it. And this is the bolt that we were trying to get to right here. This is the frame rail right here. So if you just follow the frame rail all the way forward to where it ends, and this is right behind the bumper beam here. That's where you'll find your bolt sticking out the side. We're going to remove the nut on that. 
and then it's even harder to see, but directly up from this bolt, there is another bolt right there. We're gonna remove the nut from that one as well. Once we get both nuts removed on this side, we'll be removing the ones on the other side. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter socket to remove them. So now that we've got the bottom one removed, we're gonna remove the upper one here. You can kind of see it here. Again, it's hard to see, but if you just go straight up, it's right there. We're now gonna take the larger spacer that comes in your kit. So you're gonna have the smaller one here and then these larger ones. We're gonna use the larger one and it's going to slide over our lower bolt that we'd remove the nut from, so just like that. And then once you've got it slid over that bolt, you'll kind of have to raise up on your face just a little because it's loose now. And you should be able to push those bolts back into the frame. We don't need to go in that far. We really just need to go until we're about flush with our spacer. So you might even just kind of tap it there a little bit. And that's really all we're looking for is to be about flush so that way when we raise our hitch up, it's gonna clear the bolt and then we can push the bolt back out. We'll do the same thing over on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we're gonna raise our hitch into position and the lower bolt where we put the spacer on is gonna line up with this slotted hole here. So we're gonna lift this up, line it up with that bolt and then we're gonna push the bolts back out and that's gonna go through this hole and hold it up so we can get the rest of our hardware installed. After you've got your hitch raised up, you're gonna push your bolts back out and you can see how it came through that opening there. You'll do the same thing on the other side and once you've got that done, the hitch is gonna hold itself up just hanging by those bolts. We're then gonna take the larger nuts that come in our kit, we're gonna thread it onto that factory bolt. Now you do get some extra long bolts that come in your kit. If you have a winch that is factory installed on your truck, the bolts are gonna be a little too short due to the bracketry for it, and you would remove the bolt and actually replace it with the ones in the kit. But since we don't have a winch on ours, we're gonna be just reusing that factory one and putting the new nut on it. For the upper bolt, we're just gonna be putting the old nut back on it. The only reason we had to remove it is because these two bolts are actually attached together on the opposite side by a bracket. So in order to get them to slide in and out, they both have to be loose. We'll then do this over on the other side, installing the same hardware over there. We'll now need to fish wire our carriage bolts in to the slotted holes here on the back side, on the underside of our frame there. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side as well. Take your carriage, take your fish wire, slide it through the slotted hole, through the frame, and it's gonna come out the other side of the frame. And now we've got our fish wire through with our coiled end down here. We'll then take our spacer that comes in our kit. These are the smaller ones. We're gonna slide it over our coiled end, thread our carriage bolt into the fish wire. And then we're just gonna push those back up into the frame. And then we can just pull our fish wire until our bolt comes through. Once the bolt comes through, you'll want to remove your fish wire and repeat the same process in the lower hole as well as the two holes on the other side. Once you get the bolts through and we get the fish wire off, we're gonna thread on a flange nut and it's gonna be the same with the remaining hardware. We can then go back and tighten down all of our hardware with an 18 millimeter socket. We can then go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. And that completes our installation of Kurt's front hitch on our 2015 Ram 2500.